All right, I want to welcome on my next guest. We've got a very special guest. We've got Raiders legend, pro football Hall of Famer, college football Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP, and the namesake of the Fred Belitnikoff Award. Ladies and gentlemen, M Mr. Fred Belitnikoff. Fred, how's everything going for you? Good, Zach. How are you doing? Great to be with you. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for taking time. I'm glad we were able to get some time. I know we tried it before. Tech technology <laughs> wasn't working, but we got it working now. Sounds working great. So what? So the, I know the Raiders, they're no longer the season. Their, their season's come to an end. What were your thoughts on their campaign this year? Well, you know, something I, th I thought the offense was really, really great. You know, had some uh, big play, big play guys, you know, with Josh and then with Waller, uh, you know, with Hunter and then Aguilar coming along, you know, and trying to bring Henry Ruggs around, you know, with the speed and the offensive line played well. And, you know, every, everybody played well. Even uh, Witten played well. Uh, Moreau played great. Uh, you know, so there was a good, good mix of uh, offense that, you know, had a lot of weapons to use and be able to score a lot of points. And then defensively, you know, we struggled. But, you know, we got a lot of young guys on defense. And, you know, hopefully this year, the way it went, that, you know, it's, you know, usually you don't get a chance to play and, you know, look at your mistakes and get better and grow. But I really feel that defensively, you know, we have a chance to grow after having, you know, guys playing at least one year, a second year. So the the third year, next year should be a great year for them, or this year. Yeah. Be a great year. And then for the playoffs that are going on right now, who's your Super Bowl favorite? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I mean, I've always liked Buffalo, you know, Cle Cle Buffalo, Cleveland, because I'm from that area near Erie, Pennsylvania, you know, so – you know, that's who I'm pulling for, either one of them. I mean, only one can go to the Super Bowl, but I'm hoping that at least Buffalo might has a shot to get to the Super Bowl, which, you know, with the, with the, with their quarterback and the receivers and the players and offense and defense and special team, you know, they have a great chance. You think Breeze, this is the final of the year, he makes it back, or you think something crazy is going to happen, and then he's going to be like, I'm done? Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, he's playing <laughs> well. And, you know, he had the injury, a bad injury like that with the ribs, because that's not easy to get over, you know, especially as damaging as it was. What, you know, you just hear the explanation of what went on uh, with his body, with the ribs and everything, and his lungs. Uh, you know, I mean, you never know. I mean, you, you ho hopefully that, you know, you have somebody that can step in if he does decide to retire after this year, that somebody steps in and takes over for him, or if he can go one more year and uh, or be there and or whatever but you know he's played a lot of years had a lot of great games and you know you know they're looking forward to you know, maybe this is his year you know to get to the big game so we'll see what happens and then i gotta ask you so alabama's our national champion and the star player in alabama won the bolitnikoff award this year what are your thoughts on Devonte smith and this incredible year he's had oh well number one alabama's a, a great team and number two to have somebody as great as uh uh Devante, you know playing for you you know, he's such an impact player. I mean, you know, as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, I mean, the guy's a, the guy's a big difference. You put him on a field and he's going to make a difference in a game, but he was fantastic. I mean, just unbelievable, you know, the catching, the route running, running after the catch, uh, you know, the toughness that he does have and, you know, speed wise, you know, he looks like he has really good speed and, you know, we're, we're proud not only for him to be a Heisman Trophy winner, but to win our award this year, the Bletnikoff Award. So, you know, he's just a super guy, super player, and uh, just fantastic. It's fun. To, you know what? It's fun to watch him. You know, you pull for him. And when you see him making great plays, great catches, and making a difference in a ball game, it's, it's unbelievable that, you know, how, how much he dominated games. You know, when, when, uh, you know, when Sarkeesian got him involved with everything, you know, the guy just makes a difference in the game. I mean, he's just a beautiful player. And I tell you what, I hope he carries it into the professional football. Have you gotten a chance to speak with him since he was he won the award? No, not at all. Not at all, to be honest with you, no. Well, hopefully hopefully soon, because he, he's the draft's coming up, and I, they're saying he's going to be a top pick. I can't wait to see what he does at the next level. So I want to ask you a little bit about your career. So uh, famously, Florida State Seminole, how did you decide about uh, going there? Well, you know, the, the, at that period of time, you know, you really didn't have a lot of choices, you know, and I was, you know, I was in high school. I was a running back for a period of time and a wide receiver. So when I went to Florida State, I went there as a running back and then switched over to wide receiver. As soon as I saw all the speed we had in the backfield, you know, I figured, well, you know, this is my chance to go back to wide receiver. So that's what happened. But, you know, a guy, Ken Myers is from my hometown. 
and a guy named Ray Dombrowski were both instrumental in me getting down to Florida State. And Ken is from my, my hometown in Erie, uh, Ken Myers. And uh, he was the offensive coordinator at Florida State at the time. So uh, he and Ray knew each other very well. And so that's how I got a chance to go to Florida State. Plus, you know, they were, they were looking towards throwing the ball a lot. And they were looking for people that, you know, could catch the ball and, and have a wide open uh, offense. And they, uh, Bill Peterson went down with Sid Gilman down at uh, San Diego and uh, basically studied what they were doing, throwing the ball. And we took basically San Diego's offense and implemented it into the Florida State offense. And I saw here, correct me if I'm wrong, you played on both sides of the ball. And not only did you do that, it says you had a 99-yard <laughs> pick six, which is pretty good. Yeah, down against in, in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, down in the Orange Bowl. when They used to play the uh, games in the Orange Bowl all the time. But uh, yeah, I did that. You know, they, I just got a head start. That's all I got. Okay, but... Yeah, so it, that worked out really well, and he had it. Well, at that time, you had to play both ways, you know, because you you basically not only limited to the number of people you had at that period, at that era, that period of time in in, in our lives, but uh, so you had to play both ways. So it was it was fun being a defensive back, and uh, you know, being a wide receiver, and you know, defensive back is something that you know once you get the opportunity to play it, you know, really helps you as a wide receiver. Did I see you had four touchdowns in a bowl game? Yeah, in the Gator Bowl against Oklahoma. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> did they let you keep any of those ball, those, any of those balls, or did the NCAA oh, say no? No, you no, 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 no. They did no. They were they were too cheap then. We only had so many balls to use in the game. That's all. That's what they tell you, even though they got them on display now. Well, somebody, but somebody may have them. Yeah, I might look into that. See what was going on with that. And I saw you were actually the first All American Florida State ever had. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. That's awesome. Yeah. I know. I know. It's unbelievable. And then, you know, after, you know, after me, there's a ton of guys that were all Americans at Florida State, not only in football, basketball, you know, the baseball program is terrific. So, you know, we have a lot of all Americans out of Florida State now. That's awesome. I've got a couple of questions from, from, uh, from some Florida State fans. Let's see over here. Um, who's the best receiver, in your opinion, in the history of college football? Oh, geez. I, you know, I don't even, wow. You know, like right now, you'd have to pick our winner, Devontae Smith. You know, he, he's, you know, he's probably one of the best I've seen. But, you know, I don't know, because, you know, you, you kind of go and you look at everybody and everybody has so much talent. And, you know, only people only have so many opportunities in a game. So to pick uh, who I think is the best ever in college football would be pretty tough to pick. What's your favorite memory from your time in Tallahassee? Well, you know, just being able, just being able to, number one, be able to play college football in a big, big program, you know, and number two, being able to go and uh, uh, get in a big time, you know, a bowl game, and be ranked in, in a top ten in the country, you know, which was which was a, a big milestone for us, and uh, you know, being able to, you know, not only play with the guys I played with, but uh, you know, the program we had, the coaches we had, and just the city of Tallahassee. I mean, I love Tallahassee. It's it's a it's a great place to go to school. It's a great place to be from, and it's a great place to go all the time. And it's just the uh, the people there are terrific. The school's terrific. Everybody yeah, at the school is uh, unbelievable. They have a great alumni. Uh, they have great support. Uh, so it's 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 really really good there all the way around. You know, and coming from Erie, you know, going down to Tallahassee, it was a big culture change for me. But, uh, you know, you, you, you get to meet people that live in a different part of the United States that were brought up in totally different ways that we were up north in Pennsylvania. And so, you know, you had to go and you had to learn to get, a, 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 you, know, a, get you know, get be around guys uh, from a different part of the states and uh, learn about their culture, how they were brought up, their environment, what they did, who they were, and just their backgrounds. It was fantastic. That's awesome. And I have a question. Was, was the NFL like a long-term goal of yours or did they, they kind of just come into fruition? You know, that just, you know, the, I'll tell you what, that just came around because, you know, at that period of time, you know, it, it wasn't like it is now, you know, and I got, obviously I got, uh, because it was the AFL, NFL. So I got drafted by Detroit also. And, uh, you know, I, I'd rather go out to, to Oakland because of the fact that uh, it was a passing league even though it was a young league, 
you know, and then having Al Davis as, as the guy that ran everything uh, was fantastic to be with because you were, you were going, you were going from a one program to another program that was basically the same type of style that you've been playing in college, you know, so that, that was the reason I went to, to, uh, out to Oakland. And not only that, you know, going from Pennsylvania to Florida, you know, why not Florida and California? And uh, so that was, that was my reasoning about, you know, signing with the Raiders. Then a side question. So I know there's a new documentary coming out. Um, ESPN's putting out, I think, in the beginning of February about Al Davis. Can we expect to see you interviewed in this documentary? I have no idea. <laughs> saying it, just saying it. Unless, <laughs> unless, I did some, unless I did some stuff from before, they plug it <laughs> in. I don't know. I don't know. Unbelievable. What do you think made him such a great team owner? Well, because, because he, he loved players. You know, he, he, lo he loved guys that were committed to football that really uh, their main goal is they love football. They, they went out there, they worked hard. He loved guys that worked hard, that got involved in a game that really took, you know, whatever position you were playing. He loved just to see you working at your skill at that position and going on and just, you know, not, you know, wanting to win. You know, he liked guys that, you know, if you lost it, they just didn't say, okay, we lost. He, he, he loved guys that like a lot of majority of us on a team that just hated losing, you know, and it wasn't, you know, we weren't happy uh, at all. In fact, uh, win or lose, you know, we're always looking forward to the next week, the next game, you know, and we figured all well, the smiles and everything was saved to the end of the year. So it was a very serious serious uh, uh, observation by him to look for guys that had that, that were like him, that hated to lose and were committed to playing football and just wanted to strive to be the best. Yeah. Have you gotten the chance to see that beautiful new stadium they have in Las Vegas yet or no? Yes, we did. Angela and I went down uh, about a month or so ago. Now it's just fantastic. I mean, awesome. the place is unbelievable. You know, I, I feel really sorry for a lot of people that had that you know, don't have that opportunity to go through it like we did. But, uh, you know, hopefully this year they will be able to do. And, you know, we saw the little the brick things out in front of the stadium that they have with our names on it, you know, and they, they have mine right by the, the little cement bench so I could sit there. All right. But but the stadium is fantastic. It's, uh, I mean, it, it goes beyond an explanation on, on you know, what, it, what it's like. I mean, you really have to go in there and see it because, you know, from the outside, it's stunning. You go inside, it's just fantastic, unbelievable. It's just something that you, you could never imagine that you were going to be able to play in a place like that. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And then so when you first joined the Raiders, was there an adjustment period for you? I know you didn't start immediately. I know you got to kind of start your, your, your start on special teams. But at, what was that adjustment period like? Well, the adjustment period was pretty tough because of the fact that, you know, it, the whole game was a different tempo. You know, the whole game was, uh, you know, you weren't in college anymore. You're, you're come, uh, professional football and you're playing against professional players. And so that adjustment was basically the tempo of the game, the speed of the game. Uh, you had to be really, really fundamentally sound to compete. And, you know, the competition that we faced you just on our own team was fantastic. And, uh, it was, it was just something that was hard for me to get adjusted to uh, because I had missed some uh, training camp time. And it was, uh, it was an adjustment that you have to go in there and it's right now. And it's all, you know, studying a playbook and then going out there on the field and being able to have a play call and leave the huddle and know what you're doing, you know, which I left the huddle a lot of times, didn't know what the hell I was doing, only place where I was supposed to line up, you know? And so just that little indecision Questioning yourself, am I lined up right? Uh, do I have the right route? Am I the depth right? Am I reading the coverages right? You know, and then you got to get open and you got to catch a ball. You know, so there's a lot of things when you're young, you know, like that. And, and I believe at that period of time, you know, there was a, 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 a tougher adjustment for younger players coming out of, well, guys like myself coming out of college, you know, because it was just a different, it was just a different type of game, more physical, more competitive, uh, more tempo, more speed, more quickness, you know, everything that you had to learn uh, before you even left the line of scrimmage, you know, everything you have to work on. Yeah. 
Who introduced you to Stick'em? Well, Dick Romanski, our, 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 train, our, our equipment guy, but we actually got it from uh, and saw a guy, Speedy Duncan, who played for the Chargers, was a defensive back and a returner, and that's where Dick had seen it. And so he went to their equipment guy, and our equipment guy introduced Dick to it, so we started ordering it because there was a small company in San Diego that made it. And so that's how we finally got into it with that, you know, but that was goes back to Speedy Duncan and then kind of took off from there. How, and how many games did you use it until the NFL said, Hey, we, we, we gotta, we gotta stop that. I was already gone, you know? Really? Less, yeah. I was already gone, you know, before they really made any rules about having to stick them, you know? So, so we didn't have to worry about the rules then, which we never really worry about any rules anyway. But, uh, uh, but that, that's, that's what happened. And then I don't know how far after that uh, they, they banned it, you know, or wouldn't let the use of it out there on the field. How, how similar was it to have the stick them on your hand similar to the gloves they use now? Oh, the gloves are a lot better. Interesting. Oh, the gloves are fantastic. I mean, if you, you have the gloves on, I mean, it's just something, uh, it's just, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I was shocked when the first time I put up those gloves on, you know, I mean, years later, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, uh, years later, with the uh, with the tackiness on the fingers, <clears throat> and be able to use them, be able to catch with those things, and not only that, be able to use them in winter time, you know. So yeah, but but the gloves are fantastic; they really are. Yeah. Did did Stickham ever offer you any sponsorships? Because you're like like <laughs> the most notable speaker they've ever had. Never. Really? They gotta Never. get on that. <laughs> unbelievable! That's unbelievable! That's it's wild. <laughs> I have a question. Who, who, in, in, for your time um, as playing for the Raiders, who's your, who's your favorite teammate all time? Well, Kenny Stabler, Pete Benzak, you know, Danny Connors, George Atkinson, you know, I, you know, Kenny and I lived together for a period of time Ooh. and Pete and I always keep in touch with each other now with Benzak and Danny Connors has passed away as you know, and Kenny has passed away. So they're slowly whittling away the, the old guys, but uh, yeah, those are my friends, the guys I hung out with. That's awesome. I, have a, I got a, a question from the Raiders fan. What's your favorite either on or off the field story that you can tell on a podcast or an interview about Kenny Stabler? Uh, I'd have to hold off on that question. <laughs> there, well, let me put it this way. I don't have a favorite, but there's a lot of stories. <laughs> So if you were in the league today with the systems that are going on with all the offense, what, what do you think your numbers would be? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have any idea because like right now, uh, you know, the formations they use, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's three wide receivers on the field consistently and uh, where you would be in that positioning of that formation would, would be another question. You know, what, where would you like to play? I mean, I would love been love to play. You know, I played on the outside all my, all my career, uh, but you know, playing on the inside is a lot of fun too, because it's, uh, it's not a lot, it's not easier. It's just that you have to be a little bit better and quicker. And so, you know, it just depends on your style of play, you know, and we're like, like right now it's, it's just that, you know, everybody gets a chance, you know, years ago, you carry maybe like say five wide receivers and the sixth on a practice squad, you know, something like that. Now, you know, you can't have enough wide receivers. Interesting. Who, who, who is the toughest corner you ever matched up with? Oh, Herb Adderley, Jimmy Marcellus from Kansas City. You know, th those are probably the two. Interesting. And then, do you remember the first time you met John Madden? No, I don't, because he was an assistant coach when he was with the Raiders when he first started off. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. Well, he was there, so obviously I, you know, met him obviously. But, uh, but you know, do I remember the first time I met him? No. I've got one that I was thinking of. Um, if, if, if you were to make, if they were to make a Raiders Mount Rushmore, who would be your four players on top of there? Oh, Jesus. Huh. You know what? That, that would be, that would take, uh, that would take some time sitting down and putting everybody's name up on a board yeah. and look at everybody because I don't, I don't think that, that Mount Rushmore would have a, a, it's not big enough for all the names you could put up <laughs> with the Raiders. That's awesome. And then can you talk about that Super Bowl season? What was that like? And just kind of like how that all kind of came, in, came into it? Well, it, it was a good year for us because, you know, we had been in a position for so many years, you know, to go to the Super Bowl and, 
you know, for, you know, one reason or another, we never made, made that, you know, through that championship game, but, you know, we finally made it because, you know, we had, a, we had a great team. We had great players and, uh, you know, getting there, uh, you know, we're, you know, we weren't overconfident, but we we're confident because we we're, that's how we played all year. And it was everything, everything worked out. I mean, to get to the Super Bowl, you know, during the season and during the playoffs, you know, you have to have a few things go your way and, and guys step up and play that maybe during the year, they were just having good, a good season. And all of a sudden somebody pops up on special teams on offense or defense, you know, starts to make some plays to help you win a game and get in the playoffs and through the playoffs and then you get to the Super Bowl. So it was, it was a great time for us because so many of us have been together for so many years and felt that frustration of missing out one game shy all the time uh, for many times and finally getting there and getting over that hump and getting there and, and winning, you know, and, and uh, I mean, everybody on a team that day just played fantastic. I, there's not too many games where you can see in any game and much less the Super Bowl that you could say, you know, everybody played great on offense, played great on defense, played great on special teams. And that, that was the day that all three, all three of those uh, teams on our team, thank God, uh, played great. Yeah. And then do, do you think people uh, kind of like undermine how great the Purple People leaders were? You know what? I, they probably do. They probably do because they were, they were an outstanding group. I mean, there's, you played against Hall of Famers. Yeah. You know, I mean, guys that were, were you know, to this day, all the names that, that came out of Minnesota – at that period of time, still, still are, are favorite of, of tons of people across the country, and they were they were a tough group. They were a tough bunch, and and uh, and, and but that, but I think it, it did it has lost a little bit of actually who they were, you know. Not to say anything negative about it, but actually who we played against, you know that that group, the Purple People Eaters, and that that defense on on how great they were. Interesting. And then, so what, what was what was your most memorable play from that game? What what, what kind of stuck out to you that you you kind of think about a lot? Well, you know, the, the well, the big thing was at the very beginning we ran into, you know, when we had a punt block. Ray had a punt block, and we had to recoup from that right in the beginning of the game and and get restarted. But uh, you know, you go down the list, everybody made big big time plays. You know, Kenny Kenny was phenomenal. You know the line was phenomenal with with Upshaw and Shell and the Dolby, the whole the whole group. I mean, those guys are just unbelievable. The offensive line and Clarence was great. You know, everybody played great. I mean, there's some there's nobody that you can look when you look at that film. You know, if you get to see the entire game and the number of great plays, you know, and people stepped up. It's awesome. What was it like being named MVP? Oh, it was great. You know, it was great. You know, you're representing the team. You're representing the, the, you know, the rest of, well, your whole team, the whole organization. You know, that's what you carry. I mean, you just, the MVP, even though you get the MVP, it doesn't mean that, you know, you forget about everybody else. You, you, you remember on why you got the MVP, you know, and, and like in that game, I mean, that game, there's, there's a number of guys that could have been MVP, a number. Interesting. Did they give you a car back then or anything or just the trophy? <laughs> I had a car for a year <laughs> and got a little trophy like that. It's not like it was now, you yeah. know, the whole deal. Uh, no. uh, I, think I, I think I saw, I think I saw an interview. I forget who it might've been um, Lynn Swan who said he didn't know he had a car. They gave him a car and kind of had to go back. He's like, Oh, I didn't know. So <laughs> yeah, I see. exactly. I did. I thought I had the car for good. I didn't know. Oh, really? you like it for two years to pass it on to the next to the next winner? No, you just turn it back into the dealership that you got it from. And here, here's a used car once used by Fred Bolitnikov, and then they sell it for double the price. <laughs> oh no, no, you got to carry your own insurance too. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! That's incredible. Let's see, I had, and then so um, what was the other thing I was saying? Um, so. How did you kind of know when you were kind of like getting ready to retire? I know you spent some time in the CFL. What was your decision to do that? Well, you, well, with the Raiders, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a matter of after, you know, 14 years and, you know, things got to start changing, 
you know, you're getting older, you can do only so many things. And there's a younger guys coming in or younger guys behind you. And, you know, they want them to get an opportunity to play and go forward because, you know, something after like about a 10 year period, you know, you got to start thinking about change and start thinking about younger players. And, you know, when you start, uh, you know, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to start accommodating older players. And that, that's the whole thing, you know, and it's just that, you know, when my time was over, it was over, that's it. And then Joe Scanella, who was our special teams coach for a period, period of time was up in Montreal. And so he needed a, a receiver, uh, but he needed an American receiver. So he called me and asked me if I wanted to come up and play. And I go, yeah, okay, fine. I'll play one more year. You get a running start. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so it was good. You know, it was good. We had a good, we had a good year. You know, they had a very good team. You know, we got to the championship game and lost to go to the Grey Cup, you know, but you know, that's, that's how that goes. But, you know, it, it was a good experience being in Canada, playing, um, I've coached in Canada. I played in Canada. I have a lot of respect for those, for those players up there and coaches because it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a tough business up there because, you know, you, you don't get too many, uh, uh, when the wintertime hits up there, you're playing in the wintertime, you know, and the, and the, the, the kids up in Canada, uh, you know, the Canadian kids that play have a lot of, have a lot of respect for the game up there. Uh, and they're very, very hardworking kids and they just love playing football. When yeah. you're an American going up there, you really have to get, you know, you really have to fit in. You know, you have to fit in from the standpoint of you coming up there just to play or monkey around or whatever, you know, and that's one of the, consider that's one of the considerations that I ran into when I went up there. You know, you got to show that you, you're up there to work and up there to play. Yeah. I have a question. Are, are you surprised that Jim Plunkett hasn't gotten a call from Canton yet? I'm shocked. But to be honest with you, I'm shocked. It's, uh, you know, there's like, like with him and with Cliff, you know, Tom has a shot. You know, we're, I don't think we have to cross our fingers. I would just assume he's going to get in, Lori's. But with Jim and with, with Jim, uh, I'm just shocked. I mean, there's uh, why I have no idea, you know, what, what they do as far as the voting. Cliff, I feel the same way, uh, you know, for everything, you know. And there's a lot of guys that, that played on our team uh, for a number of years that are, you know, aren't even mentioned in all of it. And when you go and you see the list they put out every year and you go down the list and think about the guys you played with and you think, well, why the hell aren't their names mentioned? You know, why aren't they in the mix? So it's changed a lot, quite a bit to, I guess, the way they have the standard of voting. But uh, uh, to me, those, those two guys, especially Jim and especially Cliff, that they do belong in the Hall of Fame. And, and like I said, I'm shocked with Jim. Yeah. No, I know because the other night when I was watching right before Devontae Smith was named Heisman Trophy winner, they had Jim was on there. And they're like, yeah, Heisman Trophy winner, two times Super Bowl champion. I'm like, why, why isn't he in Canton? I know. I so, know. Unbelievable. So how, how did you pivot into coaching? Well, you know, I never planned on coaching. I, re I really didn't. You know, when I was living down in, in uh, outside of Escondido, California, in a town called Valley Center, I started off down there at Orange Land High School. Uh, I went down there and I coached, well, it just, uh, I got to know the coach a little bit and he asked me if I wanted to coach receivers and I mulled around over it. And I said, yeah, okay. So I did it for two years down there, which was a great experience because, you know, in high school, it's a little bit different. The whole setup's different, especially, I keep going back to that period of time and it was different that period of time. You know, you had to tape your, the position coach, you had to tape your own, your, your players at your position. So luckily I knew how to tape an ankle. All right. Wait, and, you had to do it? Yeah. 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 And then then I went uh then I was at uh, Diablo Valley Junior College with Ed Hall. And then I went to the uh USF out with Charlie Sumner and then Frank Cush. And then I went to uh to Canada with Larry Kaharick. And then I came back to the Raiders. Yeah. So so I I've 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 hit uh, I've hit every level of coaching, you know, on every level. I mean I love junior college coaching because of the fact that, you know, the enthusiasm for kids that are only been there two years. And uh, I seen the change from when I was coaching at junior college to 
the four-year schools coming in looking at players in junior college, which there, which there were very few when I was coaching. Uh, but now it's, it's stepped up a whole, it's a whole different scenario now. And, but those kids work hard, you know, because they, they know they have an opportunity to go to four-year school. And that, that was the one thing I was really impressed with the group I, I was involved with in Diablo Valley, uh, the, the work ethic the kids had and what they, they wanted to learn, they wanted to play, they wanted to win. And so they're very dedicated. I have a question. Um, with the way college football is now, with it really just only a few kind of powerhouses, would you like to see kind of it's more spread out so there's more competition? You see more teams rather than Alabama, Ohio State, and Clemson in it every year? Well, I don't, I don't you know what? I, I don't know how you do that, you know, because, it, I mean, when people go out and recruit, you know, I mean, you know, obviously you get a kid of choice from here to Alabama, here to Clemson. You know, from here, go to Notre Dame, go to Michigan, Michigan State, you know, go to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. You know, that's that's a pretty, uh, pretty tough choice for a kid to say no to, you know. So, you know, how you would change that? I, I, I don't have any idea. And, and uh, uh, recruiting, uh, thank God I never had to recruit, <laughs> okay, <laughs> because... I don't know if I could stand there or sit there in somebody's living room and have parents tell me how great their kid is. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but you, you have to recruiting, you have to be a different breed of guy too. You know, you have to be able to go in there and talk to people, convince the kids. You got to you, you're selling something. It's like everything else in life. When you, when you, if you want something for your business, you got to sell it. And that's it. Do you, do you eventually want to see Deion Sanders become the head coach of the Seminoles? You know, I don't know. I, I have, well, this year is going to be a, a, a good year to see what he does, you know, and yeah, I mean, he would be a big plus for Florida State because of his name of playing there, but just the exposure he would give, but, but the coaching business is a tough business, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you don't, and that college coaching year, you're, you're not only dealing with the players, you're dealing with families, you're dealing with your own staff. You're dealing with you're dealing with the entire organization wherever you're coaching uh, at the college, you know. So it's it's not coaching's not an easy job, you know. And you know, a lot of guys find out where, you know, the number of hours you got to put in, what you have to do to preparation, everything. You have to have good people around you. So I'm interested to see how he does this year. I mean, I hope all the success. I hope he turns that program around. And they're winning. You know, they go and have a fantastic year. Yeah. And I know they've turned a couple top recruits, so it's really interesting to see what they're going to do. And I want to ask you a little bit about the Boletnikov Foundation. How did it kind of come together and what, what are this kind of stuff you guys are doing that uh, people can find out about? Well, you know, you go on with Boletnikov.org and see our website. You know, we have a fantastic website. You know, we start uh, not only with our events that we have coming up, but we, we post a lot of things. Angela does with... with uh, recreational things we're doing, keeping updated with uh, other players that I played with. Just, just a good, wholesome uh, review when you look at the, when you look at it and see what she's done with it. And then, uh, you know, what, what, what we stand for, you know, we, we start, finally opened up a, uh, an auction item uh, area on our website, you know, where you can go and, you know, buy, uh, stuff of mine, uh, some of the things that we use for our events, you know, so we, we've done that this year and we've had some, we've had some uh, pretty good hits on that with that, you know, people responding to it, you know, but it's a, it's a great, it's a great foundation because, you know, we, we really emphasize domestic violence, sex trafficking, you know, we're interested in, in the girls, obviously, you know, giving them a place, uh, that they feel comfortable at, uh, Angela has created, uh, a lot of a lot of great things from uh, redoing a house for the girls. Angela's um, now she just get done with a recreation center and uh, uh, counseling center in the back of the house that uh, she got rebuilt. So she's been hands on. Angela's hands on with the foundation every day of the year. You know that's 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 what she does. She loves doing it. Uh, she's in contact with I don't know how many people all the time year round. You know that you know year round. But she, she, when we have something going on, we're doing something, you know, she gets it done. You know, she goes out there and she really does a terrific job. 
of, of really going after a project, really going after something that the foundation needs. That's only going to upgrade the foundation and make it better foundation. And, and she does it all. Interesting. Interesting. And I just got two last questions for you. Um, in your opinion, who, who's the top receiver in the National Football League this year? Oh, geez. <laughs> you know, Zach, I'll tell you what. You know what? You could, uh, man, I'll tell you what. You, you could probably put a bunch of names in a hat and pull one or two names out and you'd be happy as hell to have them. You know, whoever it might be. I mean, you got to look, you got to look. I mean, God, I mean, you look at the guys with, with that Brady has. You look at the guys that Buffalo has. You look at the guys Kansas City has. Uh, you know, anybody would want those guys. You know, I mean, they're fantastic. They're fantastic players. You know, Pittsburgh, same thing, even though Pittsburgh's gone. But, you know, Green Bay, I don't, I don't know that much about Green Bay and the players they have except the quarterback, obviously. Uh, but no, there's, uh, there's a ton of guys in the league that, you know, anybody would want. <laughs> is, is there anybody that maybe kind of like not really the most household names that you've kind of caught and said, Oh, I like this guy. I'm gonna keep an eye on him. No, not really. Not really. I just enjoy watching the guys. I usually try to get a roster of names when I'm watching a game to see who's the wide receivers and, and just look at them, you know, but but there's guys always popping up. There's always some. There's always some guy out there on some team that'll come in and make three or four catches or catch a touchdown, and you wonder why. You go, man, that guy looks pretty damn good. You know why hasn't he played more? You know, but you know it all depends what they're doing during the year and into the playoffs. But there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that aren't the starters that still can go in there and play and perform. That's the great thing that I've seen this year happen all the time. Yeah. And then there's, there was um, one more wide receiver question. I know they came out with the finalists for Canton for this coming year. And I know they have Reggie Wayne, Torrey Holt and Calvin Johnson on the list. Do, do you think Calvin Johnson in his time in the NFL should be first ballot? I think they all should be first ballots you know, to be honest with you, but I, that me, I put all three of them in without, without a doubt. You know, I, I, I feel that that position that position outweighs, except the quarterback, you know, outweighs all the other positions, you know, without a doubt, you know, and there's nothing wrong with putting at least two to three in, yeah. you know, to, just to put one in, I think would really be an injustice to the other two. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then the last question I want to ask you was, what was it like getting inducted into the Hall of Fame? What was that whole experience like for you? Oh, it's great. You know, now it's, it's more of a production it's more uh, obviously media wise, you know, it's, it's broadcast more, all that stuff, you know, you know what I'm talking about there when, you know, now it's a big, big, huge production. Back then it wasn't that big of a production, you know, they had it entirely different. They had it in the front on the steps of, the, of Canton, you know, and you could only have so many people and it wasn't a stadium type of atmosphere, even though it was like sort of a, a, a semi-round circle that people sat in and you were in a sun roasting, but uh, but it's a great experience. You know, it's, uh, you know, you, I don't even know how many people think about being in a hall of fame, uh, but when it happens, when it happens to you, it's, it's fantastic, you know, because you think back on your career, you think back on, on, on you think back on the guys that when you were younger, uh, and you watch or, and you get to meet them and be around them. It's fantastic. It's, it's just nothing like it. I was actually speaking with um, Morton Anderson about a month ago. <laughs> and I don't know if you know, but he's had, he's on his third gold jacket. Because <laughs> he, a, he said he got a stain, wine stain on one of them. Another one tore. And, and at, when, I, when I was talking to him, he hadn't got it yet, but I did find out that he did recently get it after. And I asked him, do you know of any other guys in the Hall of Fame that have had multiple? He said he can't say. So I was curious, have you had more than one? Well, yeah, but the, from the old one to the new one they gave us. Yeah. Oh, there's another new one. I know that. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know from, the one I, from the one I first got, and yeah. then we got new ones. Oh, yeah. cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah.